Hi students, we are back with another topic from Linear Algebra, Linear Transformations. Let's first define what are linear transformations. So linear transformations are nothing but they just behave like functions and they transform or we can say change vectors of one vector space to the vector of another vector space according to a rule. So if we take L to be this transformation then it will be called a linear transformation if and only if the following two conditions are satisfied. The first condition says that if we take L to be a mapping from V, a vector space, to another vector space W, then if we take two vectors V1 and V2 from V and add the two vectors and apply the rule L, then L of V1 plus V2 will be equal to L V1 plus L V2 and L of A V will be A times L of V. Whenever a mapping is from V to V, that is the domain and the codomain are both same, we say that this linear transformation is nothing but a linear operator. Now let's take one example to explain this. If we are given L to be a mapping from the vector space R2 to the vector space R2 and the rule is that L changes the vector xy from R2 to 2x 3y that is the first point is multiplied by 2 and the second one is multiplied by 3. So if we have to check whether this is a transformation or not, linear transformation, we will take two vectors v1 and v2 belonging to our vector space r2. Let them be x1, y1, x1, x2 and we will apply the rule L on them. So L of x1 plus x2, y1 plus y2 will be nothing but 2 times the first point x1 plus x2 comma 3 times the second point or the element y1 plus y2. If we just rearrange the terms, we see we can write it as 2x1, 3y1 and plus the second vector 2x2, 3y2 which is nothing but L x1, y1 plus L x2, y2. Here we just manipulated the terms. And to check the second property, we'll apply the linear transformation L on A V1. So if we take A as a scalar V1 to be X1, Y1, A V1 will be A X1, A Y1. And this, when we apply the rule L, changes to 2 A X1, 3 A Y1. If we pull out the A, we get A times L X1, Y1. So we see both the properties are satisfied and hence L becomes a linear transformation and because the mapping is from R2 to R2, we call it a linear operator. Now let's see what happens graphically to these points. When we take some particular point, let's say V1 is 2, 0 and V2 is 4, 2. Both these points are from R2. Let's add the two points. We see V1 plus V2 will be 6, 2. So when we apply L on V1 plus V2, we see it will be L of 2, 0 plus 4, 2. And this gives us L of 6, 2, which then transforms the point 6, 2 to 12, 6. Now, if we take the right hand side, that is L of V1 plus L of V2, we see that when L is applied on 2, 0, it makes it 4, 0. And when L is applied on 4, 2, it makes it 8, 6. If we add these two, we again get 12, 6. So the first property is satisfied. Let's check the second property. We can take A to be any scalar. Here, if we take A to be 2, then we'll first test what happens to the left hand side. L times 
2 times v1 will be nothing but L, 2 times the vector 2, 0. So that becomes L of 4, 0. And on applying the rule, our point 2, 0 gets transformed to 8, 0. In the right hand side, now if we find 2 times L of v1, then that will be 2 times L of 2, 0. And L of 2, 0 we know is nothing but when multiplied first vector when multiplied by 2 gives us 2 into 2 comma 3 into 0 which is 8 0. So both left and right hand side are same. Both the properties are satisfied. Now, so we can see the point 2 0 on the real axis that gets transformed to the point 4 0 when our rule L is applied. And the point 4, 2 gets changed or transformed to 8, 6. Now let's add the points 2, 0 and 4, 2. We get the point 6, 2. So that point is nothing but the sum of the two vectors that gets transformed to the point 12, 6. We can see in the second figure if we take the vector 4, 2 as our, uh, uh, the vector 2, 0 and apply the rule L, then L of 2, 0 can be shifted to the point 8, 6 joined at the end of the vector and we can see L of 4, 2 plus L of 6, 2 that is equal to your 12, 6, which is the final point. Now, the linear transformation L from V to W is satisfies certain properties. So, if we take some vectors V1, V2 and all belonging to capital V and we take a zero vector from our vector space V, and a zero vector 0 w from the vector space w, then these three properties are always satisfied. L of 0 of v should be equal to the 0 of w. Then if we take L of minus v, the minus can always come out and it will be minus L of v. And the third property shows the linearity. That is when L A1 V1 plus A2 V2 plus dash dash A N V N that is uh, that's equal to A1 times L V1 plus A2 times L V2 etc. We have two types of operators. One is the identity linear operator. What is this? This is nothing but an operator when applied to a vector V gives us the same vector. If this happens, we call the, ve the linear operator as identity linear operator. And if we apply an operator on a vector and we get the zero of our vector space V, then such an operator is called a zero linear operator. Let's come to some examples. So in this example, let's say we have to find whether the transformation, uh, whether the mapping L from R2 to R2 such that L transforms xy into 7x plus 4y and 2x minus 3y. Is this a linear transformation or not? So we have to check the two properties. We'll take two vectors u and v. Here also if we apply L to the sum of the vectors, we will see that when L is applied, it will give us L of x1, y1 plus L of x2, y2. The same way, when we apply L on alpha u, we will get L alpha times x1, alpha times y1. And when the rule L is applied, we will be getting alpha times our L x1, y1. So both the properties are satisfied and L is a linear transformation. 
as the mapping was from R2 to R2, it is also a linear operator. Now, let's take another example. Here, we have a mapping from R4 to R4. And what is the rule? The rule is that L x1, x2, x3, x4 changes to x1 plus 5, 2x2 plus 3, and 3x3 minus 1 and x4. So, many a times it is helpful to check whether the zero of vector space on that, if we apply the rule, does it give us the zero of our vector space W? This is one of the rules which we just discussed before. In this case, when we subtake x1, x2, x3, x4, all of them to be zero, we see that the right hand side is not zero, 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 zero which is the zero of R4. So it is not a linear transformation. Now, in one more example on matrices, let the, trans the mapping be from M22 to M22. And the rule is that when the rule is applied on the matrix A, B, C, D, it changes it into 2A minus D, B plus C minus 4A plus B, C minus 3D. Let's see if it forms a linear transformation or not. So here we'll take two matrices from M22. We'll add them. And then when we apply L on the matrix A plus P, B plus Q, C plus R, D plus S, we will apply the rule and this is what we get. Now, this can be written as a sum of two matrices, 2A minus D, B plus C, minus 4A plus B, C minus 3D, plus 2P minus S, Q plus R, minus 4P plus Q, and R minus 3S. This is nothing but L of A, B, C, D, plus L of P, Q, R, S. So the first property we can see is satisfied. Let's check the second property. We'll first multiply our matrix A, B, C, D with alpha, and then apply the rule L. Now this gives us 2 alpha A minus alpha D, alpha B plus alpha C, minus 4 alpha A plus alpha B, and alpha C minus 3 alpha D, which is nothing but alpha times L of A, B, C, D. As both the properties are satisfied, L is a linear transformation. What if we have a mapping from P3 to R, that is, from the vector space of polynomials of degree less than equal to 3. And when the rule is applied, it changes this polynomial to a point from R, or it changes it into a real number. Now, to check whether this is a linear transformation or not, we'll again start by taking two polynomials from our P3, let them be P and Q. If we add these two polynomials and we apply the rule L, we see that LP plus LQ is what we get on the right hand side. Same way when L is applied on alpha P, it gives us A times alpha P. So this transformation, this mapping, in fact L is a linear transformation. In this example, we have a mapping from P2 to R and it is defined in such a way that L transforms the polynomial of degree less than equal to 2 into a real number ABC. To check if L is a linear transformation or not, we'll again start by taking two polynomials A1x square plus B1x plus C1 and A2x square plus B2x plus C2 from P2. Now, We'll add the two polynomials and apply L on the, this sum. It will give us A1 plus A2, B1 plus B2, C1 plus C2. So this was the left hand side. Now when we find the right hand side, we will see that L when applied on A1x square plus B1x plus C1 gives us A1, B1, C1. And L A2x square plus B2x plus C2 gives us A2B2C2. 
When we add these two, we see that the left hand side is not equal to the right hand side. So L is not a linear transformation. Let's take one more example. Here in this, we are given L is a mapping from R3 to R3. And we are given that L when applied on a vector 1, 0, 0 gives us minus 2, 1, 0. When this L is applied on another vector from R3, 0, 1, 0, it gives us 3, minus 2, 1. And L of 0, 0, 1 gives us 0, minus 1, 3. So here we see that we are not given any rule. We are given three particular values. We have to find, first of all, what is L of minus 3, 2, 4? And we are also required to find the formula for L of x, y, z. Or we can say the rule how L transforms our vector x, y, z into a vector of R3. So, we will first start with what we are given. So, we have L of minus 3, 2, 4. We'll write it as L of minus 3 and we will write it as a linear combination of 1, 0, 0 plus 2 times 0, 1, 0 plus 4 times 0, 0, 1. If we pull out minus 3, which we can always do, we get minus 3 L of 1, 0, 0 plus 2 times L of 0, 1, 0 plus 4 times L of 0, 0, 1. We already have values of L 1 0 0 L 0 1 0 and L of 0 0 1. We will substitute them here and we see that the point which we get is 12 minus 11 and 14. To find the rule, we will start with L of x y z. We can always write it as L x 1 0 0 plus y 0 1 0 and plus z 0 0 1. So if we keep the x out and apply L on 1 0 0, we will get minus 2 1 0 plus y 3 minus 2 1 and z 0 minus 1 3. If we add, this is the rule we get. So if we had found the formula first, we could have easily substituted x is equal to minus 3 y is equal to 2 and z is equal to 4 and got the point 12 minus 11 14 from this formula which we have just found. Let's see in this next example we have a mapping from R2 to R2. So it's a, a linear transformation given to us and we are also given that L i plus j is i minus 3j and L minus 2i plus 3j is equal to minus 4i plus 2j. We have to express L i and L j as a linear combination of i and j. So let's start with what we are given. We have L of i plus j, we know it is i minus 3j and we have L of minus 2i plus 3j which is equal to minus 4i plus 2j. We can apply L on i plus j which will give us Li plus Lj is equal to i minus 3j. Similarly from second one we get minus 2Li plus 3Lj is equal to minus 4i plus 2j. We can solve them using our simultaneous equations, the method we use for that and We'll solve it for Li and Lj. We find the value of Li is 7 by 5i minus 11 by 5j and Lj is 2 by 5i minus 4, 5, 4 by 5j. Thank you.